Welcome to Math 51. This should be our CRN number right here. Uh, that is my name, uh, voicemail number, office number, and email. Out of those options, really the easiest way to get a hold of me would be via email. Uh, where our class is on 1150 to 155, you should be able to reach me before class. I'll try to be in my office between 1045 and 1145 so that if you have questions, you can come see me. Um, but besides that, if you just need to contact me with any uh, questions, the email is probably the easiest way. You can leave a voicemail. I try to check those, but those are a little harder for me to get back to. And uh, um, obviously, just come see me when you can. Here's our book, the Introductory Intermediate Algebra 6th Edition. It's a new book uh, for this school, but I've, I've really had a lot of success with it in the past, and I, I expect for you to, to do well with it. I think it has really good explanations and a lot of good resources. I would encourage you, you do not need to purchase the book, especially if uh, you've already bought like a My Math Lab before. This one's different. So you're going to need to be able to, to purchase the My Math Lab for this, uh, this course, and it'll include an ebook. If you're really tactile and you want to have that tool, you want to have that book, feel free to uh, find it used or to um, just, I don't know, you could purchase the book and the code together, but it's not one that I require, one that I even recommend at this point. You will need the MyMathLab account, so that's the PearsonMyLabMastering.com. Go to that website today, and you should be registering for our course today. If you are uh, waiting, if you have a book that's been ordered, or if you're waiting for financial aid, there is an option when you go in there to register for the course, and I'll have a paper for that later on, uh, but there is an option that when you go to select uh, the payment or put in a code, in the small text they have where you can click, and it gives you a two-week trial for the course. Gives you a chance to kind of get in and get things started, uh, wait for that financial aid to come in. So I'm expecting each and every one of you to do that. Make sure you get on the website and make sure that you get uh, registered for the course as soon as possible. Here's our grading system. Uh, we have 70% of our grade is tests and quizzes, 20% are for final, and 10% is for the homework. I will encourage you that as far as the uh, tests go, we'll have five tests. Don't miss a test. If something comes up or if you know something is going to come up, I would say, let's go ahead and register or set it up with me ahead of time. Sorry. You can contact me, set up to take the test in the Learning Center, in my office, whatever works best for you, but try to arrange that ahead of time. I understand that life happens, and if something does happen, if you can contact me, I may be able to accommodate you, but I can't guarantee that. Um, my life happens, like I said. Obviously, I'm not here right now to, to deliver this to you directly. So life happens. Um, I understand that. But I would encourage you to, if, if at all possible, try to arrange that ahead of time. And if not, still contact me and, and see if I can help you out. But don't count on it. If, if life does happen and I'm not able to help you out with that, you are allowed to drop your lowest test score. So that's kind of my you know, crap happened test um, day and I can't take the test, well, that's fine. I'm going to drop your lowest test. So as long as life doesn't happen more than once, you should be fine. Okay. Do note that I will allow you to have a note card on the test. I would encourage you to go through your notes, go through the reviews, and to copy over some examples that you find will be helpful. Uh, things that you would struggle with, things that you maybe struggle with on the quizzes. I would I would encourage you to go through those, copy over some examples, copy over any definitions that you're not super confident on. This is kind of a quick way for me to encourage you good to develop good study habits. The idea is that when you when I find the students that make these note cards, those are my students that generally are getting, you know, the C's, B's and A's on the test. They're doing really well, but they're not having to constantly look at their note card throughout the whole test. What they're doing is by making the note card, by going through and identifying the things that they struggle with, they're actually preparing themselves better for the test. So it's a way for me to encourage you just to develop those good study habits. Plus, I do allow you to use it on the test. So please make sure you do that and make the most use out of that. For the final test, uh, we need that taken by the scheduled final date. I know that's a, a typo, I think, on the syllabus I printed. Sorry for that. Uh, but for the final, you are allowed to have an entire page of notes on both sides. That will have a, a lot of topics for the final. It is a cumulative final. Uh, it does not necessarily cover everything from every chapter, but it will be covering some things from every chapter. So I will give you a list of what those topics are before we take the final. And there's enough there that I, I encourage you to um, take a page of notes if you need to. 
for the homework. All homework assignments are submitted online. Don't plan on turning it in late. There is literally a little death clock when you go to, to log in and you try to do the homework. There's this little clock that ends at 11.59 the day before the test. Okay, That gives you a lot of time with the homework. Now keep in mind, like today we're going to be covering 6.1 through 6.3. When you come into class on, what is it, Wednesday, you will have a quiz on section 6.1 through 6.3. So you should be up to date on the homework. I give you this wiggle room on time for the homework uh, for really two reasons. First of all, life happens. Sometimes something comes up and you're not able to do the homework. Well, you're going to be struggling on the quiz, but we'll, we'll talk about that more later. If, if you're responsible, you should still be able to be successful with that. Um, but also, there are some homework questions that are more difficult than others, and there are some that I'm expecting you, most of you, to, to come and need to get help with. So that's why I leave the homework open. So when you get to those questions, you don't get frustrated and give up. You can set them aside, work on the rest of it, and then come back and ask those of me. Okay. If I find that you are abusing this uh, length of time for the homework, I do reserve the right to change that. I have had, it's been, it, it happens very rarely, but a few semesters ago, I had a class that I had a, a large chunk of the class was not keeping up on the homework. Uh, so rather than giving them till the day before the test, I would say, okay, I taught this to you today. You have three days to complete it. And I can go through and do that. That adds more work to me. And it's really not ideal. If, if you're being responsible with it, it is ideal to have that length of time to process it and then review and then take the test. So please make sure that you are not abusing the due dates on the homework. Keep up to date on the homework. Okay. All right. Um, I will also encourage you real quick before I kind of go on on this. Um, when I look at this, this looks some, somewhat intimidating. I'll have some people look at this and go, oh my gosh, you know, I no wonder I can never pass this class. It's way too hard. Well, let me explain real quick kind of how this breaks down. Quizzes are about 20% of your grade. Okay. So that's this sucker right here. Quizzes, 20%. Those are the online quizzes. Those are the in-class quizzes. Um, you should not lose any of those points. See, all of those points, the quizzes that are online, you have an opportunity to retake and get full credit. And the other quizzes are based on the homework, based on the lecture already given you. And those quizzes are open notes. See, the idea is the quiz is not for me to go, aha, I caught you. It's to say, hey, these are the topics that are going to be on the test. Show me you can do them. Or if you're struggling with them, then I'm going to highlight those struggles before you take the test. So the quizzes, and, and even generally what I'll do is if I have some people that are really good with the quizzes, they knock them out, I'll have them come around and help people. So if there's one or two topics you're struggling with, then you should not lose any points on those quizzes. You should have 100% on that part of your grade. 10% of your grade is homework. Okay, that right there, you should also not lose any points for. The idea is that you have plenty of wiggle room, assuming people are being responsible, to complete that homework and bring that up to 100%. So if you do those two things, you're going to bring your grade to uh, 30%, which is not looking very exciting. There's still 70% of your grade left, okay? So you're like, well, I just want to pass this class and I want to move on. Okay, then you need a 70%. So that means out of the remaining 70% of the grade, you need 40% of the 70, okay? That ends up being, what is that, about a 50 I think a 57 percent about okay so if you have a 57 percent average on all the tests you could pass this class with a c as long as you do the quizzes and the homework up to 100 percent and you shouldn't lose any of those points okay if um what i find is the people that are struggling to get that c they're the ones that are not doing well in the quizzes because they're not keeping up on the homework and that is where they start losing points and then they struggle to get the 50% or, you know, the 57% on the test. Um, the people that are keeping up on the homework and doing well on the quizzes, they come and they take the tests, and they're my C's, B's, and A's. And so they're my students that are going to be very successful. Please, if you are intimidated by math and you're intimidated by tests, you think this class is going to be too hard, just do me a favor. Keep up with this work, those quizzes and that homework, and you should be successful. If you are doing those two things, and you're not able to get a 57% on the test, then we need to start talking and figuring out what we can do to help you get that 57% average on the test. You're like, well, I don't really want to see, I want to be. Great. If you want to be, then what do you need? Another 50%? So that would be, I don't know why that popped up and make that go away. That would be 50% uh, more that you would need out of the 
70 that's left, and that would give us about 70%. So you basically need to get C's. If you get C's on the, on the tests and you do everything else you're supposed to, you should be walking into this uh, out of this class with a B. So it's not impossible to pass. In fact, it's very easy to pass if you're responsible with what you're supposed to. And it's not hard to get a B. If you're responsible, you should be getting at least a B in this class. So please keep that in mind. I know that the grade scales can be intimidating to people, but I like to kind of have that little math discussion. Also note that I'm not going to be around in grades. So if you want an A, make sure you get to that 90%. I do this because I want to discourage people from kind of walking that line. They're going into the final with a 90%. You're probably not getting an A. Because that means you're going to be at that 90%. Any, any hiccup on your points going to drop you to the B. If you want an A in the class, you should be going into the final with a 93%. If you want to be in the class, don't walk into the final with an 80%. Have an 83, 84, 85%. Okay. If you want to see in the class, don't walk into the final with a 70%. People that walk into the final with a 70% very rarely pass this class. You need to bring your grade up. Don't walk that line. I'm not going to round it. And I'm also not going to be um, looking at that and, and kind of wiggle and stuff. I will look through and see if there are mistakes I made if you're right on that fence. Um, but ultimately, I'm, I'm going to give you the grade you earn. Okay. Here are some important dates, and that's just for uh, my, my kindness to you. So there's some information you can look through. Obviously, technology policy, do not plan on using a cell phone as a calculator in this class. They have little scientific calculators you can get that are five bucks. That'll be plenty of what you need for this class. If you don't have five bucks, get lunch one day. It'll be worth it, right? I know I can do without a little extra lunch. Um, skip it. Get yourself a calculator. They do have calculators that you can check out from the, the Learning Center. I think it's $5 for a TI-8384. Those would be great calculators. There, there are plenty of options for you. Um, if you do check it out, what you need to do is go to the finance office. I believe you pay them. I think it's $5. It might be a little more now. but um, And they'll give you a receipt. You take your receipt with an ID, and Charlene and the Learning Center will be able to help you out with that. Okay. These are our official learning objectives. You can expect, um, as I go through the next page, these topics pop on there. These are things I'm going to be making sure that we learn. Uh, there's some other stuff that's important, but these are kind of our main topics. I also encourage you, if you need any extra help, you can always talk to me. Tutors are highly encouraged. Getting into the Learning Center is highly encouraged. Um, you can always come see me before class or by appointment. If you have any disabilities, make sure you get into the DRC and contact them, get that information to me. Um, I know a lot of times that's intimidating for people, but I love when I have a student that goes to the DRC because they come to me with almost like a sheet of paper that says, this is how I learn best. I wish we all came with a little sheet of paper that said, this works for me and this doesn't. Okay, so it helps me be a better teacher. Please get in there so that I can help accommodate and help you be a better student. Also, for the Veterans Center, if you are a veteran and you have any issues that um, I need to know about and the accommodations I can do to help you be successful, please let me know as soon as possible. Go to the DRC. You can contact them and let them know um, whatever I can do to help. Okay. Obviously, if you're in this class, you should have met these prerequisites. Here's something um, I'd like you to know. When, when you're preparing for this course, when you're preparing for a test or if you're preparing to do the homework, you should be attending class regularly. That is the most important step. If you're not here, you're not learning. And I'm starting off with some review stuff, and we're going to go some, kind of fast. But you should be taking long, drawn-out notes, write down everything you need. I always say, everything I write, you write. If you need to write more, write more. But you should always be writing everything I write, and then going and reviewing those notes, and highlighting those notes, and asking questions about those notes. Second, if you're still struggling with a topic, look at examples in the book. Once you've done that, you should be ready to work through the homework. Utilize the help buttons. We'll go over that later. Utilize the help either by coming and seeing me, going to the Learning Center. There are so many resources for you at this school. Utilize those help resources, okay? And if after following each of these, um, get help. Get to the Learning Center. Come see me. And then make sure that you come to class prepared for the quizzes. The quizzes are based on lecture and the homework materials. Please make sure that you come prepared. And uh, you should have no problem being successful in this class. A couple other papers that you should have received uh, are this. Let's see real quick. Here are our assignments. It's tentative. 
but notice we're covering 6.1 through 6.3. These are topics you should have seen in Math 55, but uh, factoring is the kind of the most important concept. It doesn't go away uh, in all of this book. Every single chapter we do, there will be something to do with factoring. Okay, when we get to logarithms, they'll be factoring. When we do systems equations, they'll be fa factoring. Never goes away. So you need to make sure that you are confident in factoring. So I like to take basically our first week and I review it and I test you on it. And this is really a good sign of, of how successful you're going to be in this class. So make sure that you take uh, this first section very seriously. If you've already had this, awesome. You get an easy chapter to warm you up. If this is something you're struggling with, fix it. Get it figured out now. Because when we get to chapter 7, chapter 8, chapter 9, I'm going to assume that you know how to factor. You need this skill in every chapter. Okay? So... Notice our first test is Wednesday, Wednesday, August 30th. That means Wednesday, August 29th at 11.59. All of this homework is due. That does not mean you put off the homework to that point. I leave it open so that you have time to process this. So that if you get to section 6.4 and there's a really hard question, it's not due on the 24th. You have some wiggle room to deal with those couple questions. Please do not abuse that system or I will change that system. Okay. All right. I highlighted holidays. Those always make me happy. I think I have, I don't have our official test day on here. I will uh, update that and let you know as, as I know the times. This should have basically everything outlined from the beginning to the end, what we're doing on each day. Okay, next. This paper you should have received. Remember I said today, you need to go to this website. You need to sign up for this course. Now, today, if you have the money, give them the money and sign up for the course today. If you don't have the money, do the two-week temporary sign up today, okay? If you have registered before, you just log in like you have before with your regular username or password. When you go to add a course, you will use this number, the acres 86483, okay? If you have not done that before, you'll have to go through the register process. It's a little longer, but at the end, once again, you can put in this code, okay? Um, so please make that a priority. I'm going to be assuming if you're not registered today that you're not interested in, in continuing in this course. So please make sure to get in there ASAP. All right. So that looks like everything. So yeah, once again, they do have a temporary access. So make sure that you, if you're waiting for financial aid or waiting for a book or uh, just on the fence on whether you like me, that's cool. Do temporary access, but make sure that gets fixed ASAP. Last but not least, invite. This is a service that I like to use. It's called uh, uh, Remind. Sorry, not invite. But the idea is um, this is a way that I can contact you without collecting phone numbers, without giving you my phone number. So um, it's a way for me to send kind of like a text messaging service. It's a great way for you to contact me. If you have a question, you can send me through the Remind app, and it basically texts me a message that I can reply. Okay. Um, if you have a smartphone, you can go here and it'll basically push the notifications when I send them. If you don't have a smartphone, you can text to this number at Acres P51. Uh, standard messaging rates apply, so in this situation, if you don't have unlimited text messaging and you don't want to pay for each message I want to send you, then, then don't sign up for this this way. Um, most people do have that unlimited texting, which is why uh, this is actually a service I'm going to require you to do. now. If you don't have a smartphone or you don't have a phone or maybe you don't have text messages, that's fine. You go to this website and you can sign up using your email. Uh, you do have an email. You have an email through the school. And if you don't have a cell phone and you're not able to check the messages, then I'm going to expect you to check your email. This is a great way for me to message you things like, hey, don't forget, the homework closes tonight. Hey, don't forget, you know, the, the test is tomorrow. Um, it can be things as simple as I cover a section, I have a student message me and say, hey, there's this really difficult question I don't think you covered. And I go, oh, you know what, I must have missed that. And I can send that as a message out to everybody. It's also a way for you to contact me. So please make sure this is not an optional part of the class. You need to sign up for a line so that you can both send and receive messages. Um, and once again, the best part about it is I don't take your number, you don't take my number. So it's a way for me to communicate with you without having all that creepiness. Okay. Um, anyway, so there's that, and the last thing I want to make sure we do is we kind of go through the, the site and see how that works. So I'm going to show you a couple features of the site and um, then how that works 
So I like to sign up. I'm kind of old school. I go to coursecompass.com and then it redirects me. But I think the site is officially, uh, what is it? PearsonMyLabMastering.com. If you have not done this before, you're going to register. It's a student. Put in your information. If you have, you'll just sign in. Any meaning my email. Here we go. Okay, so now that you're signed in, if you have not signed up for the course yet, or if you're registering, it's going to give you the option to add a course. You're going to use that number on the paper that lets you kind of register for the course. Uh, once you have signed in, it will redirect you to this, and you can choose Math 51, Fall 2017. This is what the uh, pretty similar to what your standard site should look like. Maybe as soon as it loads. Apparently, my internet is not going to be cool right now. Oh lordy! This is a good moment to stop and breathe. I guess I could. Here, I'll give it a second. Okay, so in here you're going to be able to see uh, the current assignments. Here's this little def clock that tells you when the homework is due. So make sure you keep an eye on that. Don't, don't contact me and tell me you didn't know the homework was going to close the night before the test. Literally, there is a clock that counts down every time you log in right there telling you when it's due. Okay? Uh, it doesn't mean put it off. I shouldn't be starting this in 13 days and 8 hours. Um, that will not work out well for you. Okay? This is just giving you that wiggle room that we talked about earlier. I can click on all assignments. In there is a list of the homework. There are also review quizzes. These are meant as a review for the chapter. If you get ahead on the chapter and you want to review before the test, this is a great resource. The main reason I leave these open is they're a great resource before the final. Before the final, there are a lot of topics on there. Go through and make sure you go through these review quizzes and review the topics that are going to be on the final that are in these quizzes. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go real quick. Oh, and also before I click there, here's a grade book. This will be your current up-to-date grade. As you do assignments, they update on there. As you take tests, I will put them on there. So this is just a good place to check what's your current grade. There it is. Okay. All right, let me go ahead and look at section 6.3. And here's question 10. Uh, let's say you're looking at this and going, oh man, uh, this one's a little difficult. I'm not sure how to factor this, but I think it's all divisible by 3 or by six, and so I hit six and I hit enter, and I go, no, that's not what I'm looking for. What's nice is they give you this little explanation right here of what they're asking you to do, what factoring means, what that you should try, so that's a nice little resource. <clears throat> but let's say you look at that, and you look at your notes, and you're like, I still have no idea what I'm doing. I need some help. The best thing you could do is click here on the textbook. Um, I'm not going to wait for it to load this time, but the idea is that this opens up the e-edition of the book, it takes you directly to the page, to some examples where they have a little mini lesson that prepares you for the topic that is right here. So that is a great resource to go to. If I go back, a uh, second resource that I would encourage would be view an example. So here's a similar question, and I can go through and kind of work through with an explanation. It's kind of like the explanation that's in the book, okay? Um, and then last, the help me solve this. This I would actually discourage, except as a last resort. If you go through this, they're like literally walking you th this through this example, step by step. Um, and you're like, well, that's great. So I'm going to do well in the homework. Well, here's the problem. Students that go through and use uh, these two especially, um, I'll see people that get like really high on the homework and then they struggle on the tests. And what will happen is when I walk by, I see them using these two things on every single homework question. You're basically preparing yourself that you can't do a math problem without, one, you in, viewing an exact example, or two, having somebody give you step-by-step -step instructions. That's not good. It's a great resource, but do not overuse these two. Okay? You can also click the Ask My Instructor. Um, I'm not sitting at my computer waiting for these types of questions to pop up, so I generally will respond like I do in my emails one to two business days. So, um, But that is not the easiest way to get an answer to this. Try to get help yourself. Try to go to the Learning Center. You can click on this if that's not an option to you, uh, but just don't expect like an immediate response. Okay? So once you've done that, if I've done this too many times and I miss it, 
Please note, um, real quick, if I do this too many times, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to do this on purpose real quick. Check answer, check answer. All right. I just, oh, nah, I missed it. They just gave me the right answer, okay, with a little explanation. I didn't lose those points. I mean, I did just lose those points, but I can get them back. I can go back to this question, and I can hit similar question. And it gives me a chance to do a question that would be similar, that now that I've reviewed it, I could look at that and go, okay, I see how this works. It's, you know, 3U, if I mess up here, uh, 3U, and then it would be, looks like 3 and 1, and how about plus 3 and minus 1. And you can go through and you could check that. Oh, that's interesting. No, that's not right, is it? <laughs> how about, I need not to make mistakes. One year. There we go. That will distribute. This, once again, should be a review uh, for me, too. Um, but go through and check it, and then see. And there you go. And then I've got my points back. So don't be mad if you miss a homework question. You can earn those points back. So that's basically kind of the intro. Uh, we have one more video. It's just going to be the lecture. Sorry I'm not there again, but the good news is 6 one through 6 three should be review topics. I will go through and have a lesson for you. Uh, and then get on those homeworks. We're going to have our first quiz on that homework assignment on Wednesday. See you then.